Our next guest is known as the Meteorite Man. Jeff Notkin is also the host of the local show STEM Journals. Well, recently he's had lots of involvement in space exploration. Jeff was the speaker at two important space events in California recently, and he joins us now to tell us all about it. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, ladies. I always love being on the show. It's great to see you. We love having you. Thank you. Especially because it's I your know. last day. I want to wish you every success in your new venture. It's been such a pleasure working with you. Thank you, sir. I know Jeff got to co-host when you were off getting married. I know that's Jeff co-hosted with me. And we, we did fun. the comet experiment. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Science experiments live on television, a bit risky. Yeah, right. <laughs> but we, we triumphed. Well, this is the, your place to experiment. Oh, the morning you. blend. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll be sure to try out my new material. Right. <laughs> there you have it. All right. So tell us about the, the experience that you had giving those two keynote speeches. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I was at Space Fest in Pasadena, which celebrates the history of space flight. And many of our great astronauts were there. And then I went to the International Space Development Conference <laughs> in L.A. Thank you for doing that. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> so this is nuts and bolts. What are we doing with space? And I gave a lunchtime keynote address and seated there right in front of me was the mighty Buzz Aldrin, <gasps> the second man to walk on the moon. Wow. So no pressure. Yeah. And I, I introduced him and I said, what an honor. He's one of my one of my personal heroes. And I said, Buzz, if I get any of the science wrong, you be sure and let me know because he's he's a brilliant scientist Cute. as well. Well, whenever we talk about something like this, people will always say, you know, what is the impact of humans getting involved in space exploration? This is you know? one of the most fascinating topics yeah. that science is grappling with today. And I am on the advisory board of Deep Space Industries, the asteroid mining company, mm -hmm. and the Astro Sociology Research Institute. And the founder, Dr. Jim Pass, asked me this question. What are the human implications of spaceflight, of yeah. long-term spaceflight? Mm -hmm. And we don't know, yeah. is the answer. The longest anyone's ever been in space is 437 days, and that was on the Russian space station Mir. Mm. And in fact, it was just announced that NASA astronaut twin brothers Scott and Mark Kelly are going to participate in a long-term effect of spaceflight study on the ISS, International Space Station, next mm. year. So we know that weightlessness affects the human body, but in, in a broader sense, how are we going to exist mm -hmm. as a spacefaring species? Because believe me, it's coming in our lifetime. Mm. We're going to see a Mars mission. We're going to see manufacturing in space, asteroid mining. It's a really exciting time to live. We are going back into space. And this time, it's the private sector that's doing it. We're not relying right. on government funding. Right. And as technology keeps advancing, are those missions still as dangerous as what they were years and years ago? I, your, your question reminds me of, of the great... John F. Kennedy's speech when mm -hmm. he talks about the most hazardous and greatest undertaking in human history going to the moon. Yes, it's hazardous, but yes, we have brilliant people working mm -hmm. on it. And one of the big debates at present is, do we go with robotic spaceflight mm. or do we go with manned spaceflight? And Buzz Aldrin and myself and many others are proponents of, of humans in space. Why? because we need to, because it's in our nature to right. explore and to make ourselves better and to learn about the universe around us. And one day in the distant future, the Earth will no longer exist. It'll be swallowed up by the sun. Mm. So if we're going to survive, we have to colonize space. It's not a could be thing. It's a must thing. Well, we know that you love to explore and you always bring us such great <clears> props. <throat> and I'm really curious that you've got these rocks, you know, and then you have half a grapefruit. <laughs> Well, ladies, have a grapefruit. First right. of all, it's it's uh, local. It's from the grapefruit tree in front of my office building. <laughs> this is the great grapefruit asteroid demonstration. Okay. And it shows that asteroids have different layers. This represents the crust, the mantle, and the core. And sitting here on the table is a very unusual type of meteorite. It's called a silicated iron, and it shows what the interior of an asteroid might look like. Mm. We know that some asteroids have very different components, and that's why I'm so involved with Deep Space Industries and some of the other space exploration outfits, because my knowledge of meteorites is useful in looking at what type of asteroids might we want to mine. In the near future, again, this is going to happen. And one of the big steps forward, leaps forward, 
in space activities. This is the hot phrase now, space activities. Oh, I, I like it. Space program. I like because it. Because there's some <laughs> different things we right. can do. If we can harvest raw materials from asteroids and use them in space to manufacture ships, fuel, equipment, Mars bases, moon bases, we can do anything. That's the way it's headed. That's really cool. And really quickly, because we're running out of time, people can come and see you tonight. It's true. One of my favorite charities is the Hope Animal Shelter here in Tucson. I've been a supporter of them for many years. They're Tucson's only no-kill shelter. And they're having a fundraiser tonight, 5 p.m., at the beautiful Cushing Street Bar and Restaurant. So please come down, say hello, and save a cat or a dog. It is a go. noble pursuit. There you have it. Yes, it is. Thank you very much, Jeff Notkin. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. All right, and you can catch all of the newest episodes of Jeff's show, STEM Journals, on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on Cox 7. To learn more about all of his episodes, you can go online to cox7.com slash STEM Journals. And to learn more about Jeff, because who doesn't want to know more about Jeff? I do. Go to notkin.net. And stick around. The Morning Blend will be right back with what's happening next week on The Morning Blend. But first, here are some of our favorite moments <laughs> we got to share with Sally. Well, I saw Uncle John with bald head Sally. He saw Aunt Mary coming and he ducked back in the alley, oh, baby. All you wanna do is ride around Sally. This is not the kind of music we usually play on 106.3 The Groove. Instead, today we're taking an opportunity to say a fond farewell to our own Sally Shamrell. Stay right where you are. The Morning Blend will be back in a moment.